Welcome back to P2 Aero, and you're looking at the Yamaha Sidewinder powered RANS S21 project. It's time for a bit of an update on the progress that I've made. I still have yet to final weld the engine mount. I'm really just waiting it out, making sure that I like everything where I have it as the other parts go in around it. I've started to finalize the location of the electrical components that I have on hand, and I've also begun wiring those components. I'll start at the back under the baggage floor where you'll see both the Dynon transponder and the comm radio. My thought process is simply to reduce the coax runs to a minimum. The mounting tray allows a good sturdy mount while still being very easy to remove the units for service if it's ever needed. I'm a long ways from having all the wires in place, but in an effort to keep things tidy, I'm tying as I go. In the end, I'll remove all the temporary string and tie it all up as one bundle. I'm still gathering fuel system components, but you'll see the two pumps there roughly in position. I went ahead and laid out the instrument panel, and I cut a few holes to mount the comm radio head and the can keypad. Keep in mind that I've ordered button inserts that will reflect what these buttons will do, so what you're seeing there isn't a final product. The coolest part is all 12 of those backlit buttons connect through these few wires to the PDM. And speaking of the PDM, I've got most of the power wires needed for the firewall forward in place as well as I've secured the unit to the cage shelf using cushion P-clamps. Over on the other side, I've also secured the Hypersports ECU. I designed up a mount in Fusion 360 and sent it over to Steve at AS Flightlines. He printed up a prototype and sent it to me, so make sure you reach out to those guys if you're interested. Links will be in the description to all the sites that I mention in this video. I've got most of the engine harness passing through the bulkhead, with the exception of a few after running out of 16 gauge wire. You'll see my temporary wire chase there. It's got zip tie loops just helping me keep everything in place, but it will all be ultimately removed when the harness gets tied up. Up front the wires come out and bend in a 90 down, so I put some service loops as a means of strain relieving the connector. I've tied up the shrink tubing back shell there, so all the wires are already passing through it. The entire harness forward of the firewall will be protected in some way in the future after I've proven it to work correctly. Moving on forward you'll see the Link CAN Lambda module. It'll give the O2 sensor data to the ECU via a CAN bus feed. The harness will split in this area and ultimately end up behind the engine mount but the first leg will service all the sensors under the intake manifold area. The other leg will be secured under the engine over to the other side servicing all the items down there. I found some aluminum tube mounts intended for light bars and UTVs. I think they worked well to hold these various sensors and boxes along the main mount rails on both sides of the motor. And lastly, the final leg goes up to catch everything else on the top of the motor. In the end, I think it'll be a very clean setup. I'll catch some of the details on film moving forward as I finish up and start crimping pins on the connectors for each sensor location. I've labeled each wire but left the tubing unshrunk until the final length is determined and the pins are crimped on. Then I'll go ahead and locate those where I want them and heat them up. This is the label maker that I use. The cartridges are a bit expensive, but I don't think there's a better looking way to do it. Check the links in the description for any of this stuff, but if you don't find it, make sure to ask me in the comments. I use just a regular heat gun, so nothing special there, but I did recently get a new set of crimping pliers. Every pin so far has been completed with this set, and I gotta say I'm pretty happy with it. It's no Daniel's kit for those in the know, but it is a fraction of the cost and works just fine. I do realize that this level of DIY is above what a good portion of you want to undertake. Lucky for you, there are options out there. I've been working with Ian over at Ian's Life to develop a solid setup that could be offered to people wanting to run a similar setup on their engine. Obviously. My harness is highly custom to my specific desires and doesn't really represent what you'd get from a consumer product since it's got to be more universal in nature, but it will be a plug and play setup for the most part. He's got a super cool channel where he does some awesome stuff so go check that out and make sure to contact him if you're considering a 3 cylinder setup. As for the P2 Aero S21, I figure I'll get this engine mount welded in the next few weeks hopefully. And then I'll be able to get the fuselage off this jig and onto the gear, so stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.